Hey, what's going on guys? Hey, welcome back to another episode of Bad Beast Barbecue. Hey, today we're going to be doing some uh, beer brined chicken wings. Now, if you guys saw a couple of videos ago, we took a, a pork roast and we injected it with some wine, with some apple pie wine from a place called St. James Winery. Uh, those guys saw the video and they loved it so much they contacted us and asked us if we would be interested in using some of their other products in cooking videos. I said, sure, why not? Go ahead and send them to us, right? So they sent us a couple of bottles of uh, their peach wine, which we're going to be using uh, in a couple of videos later on. And they also sent us uh, a uh, box, a six pack of uh, Frisco 1501 Historic Lager. Now this is one of their new lagers that is coming out on the market. It won't be on sale until mid-March, so I got kind of a sneak peek at it before it hit the market. So, so we're going to taste this, but uh, what we did was we found the recipe on SmokingMeat.com where they were doing beer brine uh, chicken and we just want to do some wings. So uh, hang around, we're going to go ahead and show you this uh, quick prep work and we're going to be using the master built electric smoker today uh, and I'll be talking about some information I got from my man Byron over at TNT Barbecue who uses the master build quite a bit uh, because I had some concerns and some issues with smoke and uh, he kind of gave me some ideas so we're going to put those to the test. So hey, hang around, don't go nowhere. Okay guys, so here we have our uh, chicken wings that have been brining for about 15 hours now and uh, these have been brining, brining in cold water, uh, the actual rub, two bottles of the 1501 beer and a few other ingredients that we're going to put up here on the screen Alright guys, so like I said before, we're going to be using the master built electric smoker today. And as most of you guys know, whoever owns these things, uh, the maximum temperature of this gets up to 275 degrees. Uh, the one problem that I feel that I had with this particular smoker here is that I wasn't producing enough smoke. Um, even when I put the smoking tube in there, uh, the smoking tube would go out because of lack of airflow. So I was talking to my man Thyron over there at TNT Barbecue, and he says that once he puts his chips in, to the uh, tray down at the bottom, he just leaves the, the the tube out. That way, you get some nice airflow throughout the entire smoker. It should provide enough oxygen for the uh, wood chips to continue to smolder and provide much more smoking flavor. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do.
Okay, guys, so we're done with our cook. A couple things that I want to talk about. Uh, first, the advice that I got from Thyron over at TNT Barbecue about leaving the wood chip tube out of the electric smoker worked real well. The more oxygen got into the smoker, produced a lot of smoke. I can even smell the smoke uh, coming off of the chicken. So, And that's a, a, an improvement over what I, I've been able to do over uh, in past cooks with the electric smoker. Now, the one thing that I did have a problem with, it looked like when you left the tube out, it lost some heat. So the electric smoker seemed to was getting having a problem getting up to 275 degrees. So after the first 45 minutes or so, I put the tube back in so that the heating chamber could maintain the heat. Now I have an older model master build electric smoker, so some of the new ones may not have that problem. But um, that, that's the uh, the type of cook that we got out of it today. Okay. As far as this Frisco 1501 historic lager. Um, this is my second bottle I'm drinking. Uh, it's, it's a great lager. Uh, like a lot of lagers have that little bitter aftertaste. This one doesn't have uh, that much of an aftertaste. It's got a great uh, caramel color. has a great fragrance and it goes down real smooth. It is, uh, seems to be uh, a bit strong um, more than the beers that I normally drink but uh, it's a great beer nonetheless and I can also smell the beer coming off of the chicken. Uh, since we marinated in the beer and then we kind of dipped them in the beer and the rub combination uh, at the end of our cook, okay? Also, the rub that we used today was uh, Gary's Seasonings Too Hot for Mama. Now, if you guys remember, Gary had sent me a bunch of seasoning uh, several months ago and we did a pulled pork with this uh, Too Hot for Mama. Great seasoning. We're all out of it now, but uh, this gives a fantastic kick of heat to the back of your throat when you're eating whatever you make with this is a great um, rub so if you have an opportunity check out Gary's seasonings I'll put the uh, contact information in the description block uh, and at the bottom of the screen now I use beer to brine these wings people usually make comments on hey what can I use other than that uh, according to uh, smokemeat.com you can use anything other than beer if you want to you can use any type of soda and coke you know whatever, whatever you want to do uh, to replace the beer in the brine okay uh, but we're gonna go ahead and have a taste test and let me tell you how all this played together okay Okay, first let me say it's a very juicy wing. Uh, the outside skin is, is a little crispy. Uh, sometimes you have a problem getting crispy, crispy skin like you would off of any other smoker when you use the Master Bill Electric Smoke. I didn't put any water in it because I didn't want a steamy environment. I wanted to try to get as crisp a skin as I could on these wings and they're pretty crispy. Not as crisp as you would normally get when you cook them on the Weber or something of that nature, something that has charcoal and heat but the electric smoker did a pretty good job. I can taste the lager beer in it and it's definitely pronounced and the uh, heat coming off of Gary's seasoning uh, definitely ties in well. Now if I, wanted to, if I had to add anything else to the recipe, I would probably have added a sweet element just to kind of give you an overall balance, okay? <clears throat> so what I would have probably done is in that part where we had the beer and the rub together and we dip the wings in and put them back on the smoker for about 30 minutes. I probably would have added a little honey or uh, maybe a little brown sugar or something of that nature just to give it a hint of sweetness in order to make the flavor of the wings balance out all the way across the board. But hey, all in all, these are some great wings and like I say, if you want to put some dipping sauce with them or some barbecue sauce to dip these with, it'll definitely work out well. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. I want to thank the folks out at uh, St. James Winery and at the Public uh, Brewing House Company for providing us with the Frisco 1501 Historic Lager. Great beer. It's going to hit the market uh, for public sale come mid-March, so in a few weeks it should be, uh, be available for purchase. Uh, I also want to thank the guys over at Gary Seasoning for providing us this seasoning. Great product. We'll have to go out there and purchase some more. Thanks, Styron over in TNT Barbecue for the advice on the uh, Master Build Electric Smoker and how to get more smoke and, uh, uh, out of your wood when uh, cooking with the Master Build. And, uh, and uh, last but not least, 
I want to go ahead and thank uh, St. James Winery again for the peach wine they sent us. We'll be doing a video on that real soon, okay? Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Like we always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if it's fire, then damn it, there just might be a barbecue there. Mm. See you guys around the smoker. <laughs>